Hello everyone. In our study of perspective in development of human geography, I am now asking you to take the understanding of or more defined comprehension of one of the less talked about but given quite significant prominence in our question paper, dualistic tradition between realism and idealism. I have just jotted down some of the important aspects that can be taken as the beginning point to the study, idealism versus realism. Dualistic tradition becomes an integral part of geography and geographical study fundamentally because geography makes the discipline which is identified with diverse content matter. So the key term that I take in our introduction because we have talked about determinism and possibilism taking support of Kuhn's paradigm. If I just add that, if I talk about dualistic tradition, dualism has to do with geography as an integ integral part largely because content matter of geography is diverse, content matter of geography is dynamic. And basically these two terms of, of the content of geography gives us a very far reaching kind of an imprint that any type of developed method or any type of developed idea possibly will satisfy aspiration cores of study of geography to some extension chronologically or even chorologically. And then in due course of time it will prove to be insufficient. I am not saying it will prove to be wrong. I am saying it will prove to be insufficient because the content matter by itself is not static. So the genesis and multiplying effect on dualism has to actually do with what is identified as the study of geography as a discipline that is substantially diverse, geography is discipline of synthesis and substantially dynamic, geography is a contemporary discipline. Now focusing on what we have selected for this particular video, what is dualism between idealism and realism? If I go with the face value of it, idealism, geography of mind. So if I quickly write it here, idealism as geography of mind is credited to Peter Gould that geographers should take into consideration what is called perception human perception. It basically is focusing more towards the study of what is called normative. And who was the scholar who substantially enriched it beyond? So if I have to talk about idealism, I possibly will pinpoint only one scholar and the name is Gluck approached idealism as one of the approaches in humanistic tradition emphasizing on mental world, perception as the focus of geographical study. He basically contributed to two defined types of what is called idealistic tradition, quickly writing it then talking about it. One is called metaphysical argument. And two is called epistemological argument. What is the elementary difference between these two arguments of Gluck? Basically tends to create the foundation of what we take in our study as approach of idealistic tradition. So what is metaphysical argument of idealism? There is no real world independent of human mind. So if I have to pinpoint metaphysical argument, I'll say metaphysical argument, labeling it here as A and B. What is metaphysical argument? Metaphysical argument is no real world. independent of human mind 
everything that can be perceived by human mind everything that is residing in or constituted by human mind is what is real and geographer should attempt to explore it then how it is different from epistemological argument epistemological argument part b talks about reality is what is residing in human mind which is derived from world of experience and that is the reason epistemological argument is more compatible to phenomenology in humanism i repeat it basically when i take reference or contribution of leonard gluck as propounder of supporter of idealistic tradition in geography we are emphasizing on his view point that perception geography of mind cognition is what geographer should focus on and then he gives us two defined arguments one argument that is metaphysical is rigid is extreme metaphysical argument says everything and anything that is constituted by or is residing in human mind is real rest all the things are not to be explored because i have to understand i am quoting plato greek scholar reality is poor images of perception i see that account when it comes to metaphysical argument but he also gives us epistemological argument which says reality surely is what is residing in human mind but that mental world comes from world of experience and, and thus cannot be aloof of that world of experience so geography and geographers should be oriented towards analyzing world of experience real world altogether if i have to take the dualistic tradition that goes with this approach counterbalanced with realism so realism is credited to gibson gibson gave us a very restrict kind or we can say rigid kind of idea almost matching with metaphysical argument like metaphysical argument says there is no real world independent of mind and gibson says real world is independent of human mind dualism is absolutely generative what is metaphysical argument of leonard gluck there is no real world independent of human mind what is realism of gibson real world is what is independent of human mind that is the reason realism goes with what i have written here realism goes excellently with empirical it opposes normative idea it opposes normative orientation in the geographical study do i see any distinctive orientation that can be applied to the study of realism actually yes i have got two contributors that identify two distinctive types of realistic idea and who are they i am writing it here so i i can pick up these scholars as cook wilson and tp nun what is the point of difference that i see with their work cook wilson is propounder of what is called nave idealism and i'm sorry nave realism and tp nun is the propounder of what is called critical realism if i have to pinpoint the 
differences that can be justified with them. When we talk about the idea that has been given to us by Gibson, it is an opposing reference to the metaphysical argument of Gluck, we have understood. And that has been given rigidity in the work of Cook Wilson. The naive realism or rigid realism or the realistic idea that is identified to be direct, that is quite uh, extreme kind of an orientation, is applied with, I have to take everything that is empirical. I have to take everything that is observable. If the things are not observable, they are not real. So when I say positivistic idea that was propounded by Auguste Comte as an attempt to segregate out religion from science, there was a clear argument. Everything should come from work, from the experience. If I cannot observe anything, it is not real. So I get that, that type of orientation when I talk about naive or direct realism. But when it comes to TP Nun, the critical or comparatively more nominal kind of realistic idea, it says there is, there, there is nothing real which cannot be experienced. Nothing exists beyond experience. And what is this beyond? Nothing exists which cannot be experienced. All the key expressions are written in front of you. You can easily try to take the understanding. Idealism is talking about everything that is perception. Realism is talking about everything that is empirical, but idealism as epistemological argument is giving defined empirical edge to the study and realism as critical realism is giving defined reference to what can be perceived. So T.P. Nunn's critical realism and Gluck's epistemological idealism is more nominal viewpoint. So when I'm supposed to write answer, when I'm supposed to learn dualistic tradition between realism and idealism, what I should keep in mind? That to begin with they are poles apart. And they are poles apart as what? They are poles apart as metaphysical argument of Gluck in idealism. No real world independent of human mind versus Cook Wilson's naive or direct realism. There is no world that is independent of human mind. There is no world which is dependent on human mind. Every reality is independent of human mind. Independent of human mind, dependent on human mind. Extreme. But dualistic tradition have eventually eased down with idealism identified with epistemological argument. Reality is what is perceived and perception comes from experience. Realism got eased down with critical realism. Reality is what is observable. But actually everything that we see as real is what is experienced. As in nothing exists that cannot be experienced. And experience takes me to the study of what? Perception. Less talked about as a constituent altogether relating to the tradition of human geography, realism versus idealism gives us the account of dualistic tradition that have enriched geographical field of inquiry. Take the understanding of this dualistic tradition in its integration to metaphysical argument, normative par excellence, Naive realism, positivistic par excellence, epistemological argument and critical or more poised down, less rigid, nuns realism as balancing act between normative and empirical. 
with this orientation this dualistic tradition becomes complete because if you see the type of questions that comes up in examination i do encounter question i'll be wrong if i say we don't i do encounter question in examination which ask me to write about uh, what is the idea or what is the orientation of certain method but more importantly i need to judge the validity of such ideas so if i am comfortable with the nature of idea judgment becomes comparatively easier i hope after this it will be much more easier for you to comprehend and thereby with your understanding judge the validity of these approaches in human geography all the very best to all of you